What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Basement Show. We got Ramon, we got Cheeseburger, and we have the talented cartoonist and animator Noella Bori. Thank you for coming back to the show. We got some Faceless Neil to talk about, but first we got Future's End, number one, DC New 52. We got Chaos, number one. We got Burn the Orphanage, Reign of Terror, which is the sequel to Born to Lose. We got Nailbiter. We got Amazing Spider-Man 1.1. We got Amazing Spider-Man's Who Am I, Cyclops number one, we got Miles Morales, Ultimate Spider-Man number one, Original Sin number one, and we're going to talk real quick about Caliban 2 and Iron Fist number one, uh, number two, two. number two. Number but two. first, before we get to that, let's talk Faceless Neil. Now, the last time you were on the show, we were talking about and showing off the comic strip that you were doing was basically like kind of a daily to weekly, basically whenever you decided to put one out as often as you could. Well, I started dailies and then it got, you know, I got busy with other stuff, so I did weekly for a bit and then I, I had to stop because I started working on the, the short that's coming out uh, this month. So, in case you guys don't know, Faceless Neil is this comic strip that Noella was doing. Is basically kind of a Tim Burton-esque character. He's mm -hmm. got really black eyes, kind of a ghostly looking kid without a mouth. And he can't speak. Well, he's got no face. So. Yeah, he has a nose either. So yeah. That's true, just, he, doesn't have a, he does not have a nose. He has the hint of a nose, but no schnoz. And <laughs> his best buddy is this de demon? He's a spirit, so, well, not really, not quite a demon because he's a good guy. Mm. Um, he's very, yeah, well, he's, he's, he's very... Mischievous, like, I guess, is a good very word. Yeah, exactly. I can't, I can't pronounce that word. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, he's he's uh, very mischievous and um, just very forgetful, and he just he, he never like he just likes to play tricks. Tends to get Neil into a lot of trouble, if I remember the comic strip well yeah, enough. Yeah, because he loves to drink and the ladies, so yeah, he, he usually gets <sighs> Neil into trouble. Well, he fit right <laughs> into this uh, motley crew of misfits. So. Basically, the comic strip was about Manny and Neil's adventures, and it would often find them in the bar in Mortville, and it would encounter other monsters and such, and Manny would usually be hitting on the women and kind of pushing Neil in the way. Yeah. <laughs> in a much of, have you met Neil kind of way. And you know, Neil would usually get like a drink poured on him or something like that. But how did you go from getting the comic strip to now doing the animation? And uh, let's let's talk about that process. Oh, well, actually, because it's always been Faceless Neil Project has always been a project to make. Um, the idea for me was to make a film. So I always I started from that. I started doing the comic in the middle because I had all that material and all these ideas, and it was an aspect of I was because I was thinking about developing a TV show. I started with a story. Like I started with concept art and I made a first short and it looked cool and then I kept developing the story and like and, you know years later I had like a hundred and you know certain pages of a story like the origin mm. story of Neil why oh. he's faceless and it, like it's all entire quest for his identity like what happened to him um, but then I thought you know then you could go so much further with you know at the end of the script it's not really it's open-ended so I was like you could do a TV show you could do comics you could do stuff like that so then that's how I got the idea to do the comic strip because it was an easy way for me to just do this little bond and like you know the idea that Neil stays in Mortville with Manny and just has this random conversation with spirits like all these demons and like you know guys are like spirits and they all have stuff to do in the real world, but that's where they live. They live in Morville and they spend most of their time at the bar just complaining about stuff. So uh, it was like just, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> so it's, um, so the, the comic didn't come first. It was first um, an ID for a little short animation that grew, grew into a feature ID. And of course, because making a feature is like very, it's Obviously. big and search and price. So like I, you know, I went into this direction to make sneak peeks, teasers, and things like that. And the comic was, I, I miss doing them. Uh, I stopped because I started working on this new short uh, that's out of the darkness that's coming out. But uh, I really miss doing them. How did you go from, what, that is, how did you decide to do stop motion animation yeah. as opposed to just regular 2D animation? Because I'm, I'm just looking yeah, at the little yeah. doodle head that you got in front of you and you're a yeah. great artist awesome. and stop motion is very time consuming how long did it even take you to make that 
you know, nine minute video that we were privy to earlier um, today? It took 16 months, but <laughs> it took, Christ. technically, I, I lost a lot of time in pre-production because I had, I waited on the puppet to be made. I didn't do that. Mm -hmm. So the animation, I, did, I didn't do such a bad job on the, the animation itself. It took me about six months. Okay. okay. Six, seven months. Okay. Like, so it's not too bad. Still a long time for nine minutes worth of cartoon. Well, do you, if you remember the face shop, which was a mix of 2D and a little bit of stop mm -hmm. motion, it took me six months to animate it. And it's, 2D is time consuming too, it's just a different technique. So the thing about 2D animation is that you can get started a bit more fast, and because it's 2D, you can do whatever you want. The character can fly, the character can like stretch to whatever when you do stop motion you have to put a lot of thinking into pre-production because you cannot yeah. screw around once you start shooting because you're going to deal with gravity and that kind of stuff yeah, so yeah. the character if he's not you know if the puppet is not done properly if you can like screw his feet to the floor you're not going to be able to do certain thing if, if he's going to jump you need to think about how physically you can do that so you have all these things to figure out before you can start shooting. Then 2D, you can get started right away, but if you want a nice animated sequence, it's going to take forever to, to get it done. So it's, it's just a different medium. And the reason why I didn't do stop motion earlier is, is because I started with 2D. I have always been, I've been trained as a 2D animator, and I love the medium, but uh, I always thought of Neil because it's, it, he had that very Tim Burton vibe, mm -hmm. obviously. So I was like, if I was to make a feature, I, I, always, I always imagined it as a beautiful... I was obsessed with Coraline at wow, the time. Awesome. Yeah. Great movie. You know, because I saw... I, that's how actually I got back into Could've stop motion. Could have did without the old ladies yeah. with the big tits and pasties, but, you know, whatever. Yeah, it Tim was... Yeah, that was well, that wasn't, that wasn't Andrew Selleck. That wasn't Tim Burton, <laughs> but uh, the Coraline. Okay. The, it's not Tim Burton. No, it's Henry Selick. Henry Selick. He had nothing to do with that. Nothing. No, nothing, to do, nothing that. to do with it. Wow, like that. <laughs> Talk about inspiration, then. <laughs> right? No, Henry Selick like is. Yeah. Well, he, I mean, he did. Henry Selick did Nightmare Before mm. Christmas too. So he's got you know that same uh, st similar style. Uh, but I remember I was mostly obsessed with studio animation. Then I saw Coraline when I was in college, and then I got obsessed with stop motion. And when I started imagining the story for Neil, I was like, it would make so much sense to have it done in stop motion, but I had no idea how to even make a puppet, which is a very, very complicated process. Did you ever break the puppet while you were making the, and then have to like put it back together? It, see, like, I, it seems like it I happened broke, pretty often. For, I, I broke Neil's, uh, I broke both of his wrists and I broke his chest and his back. So the poor little guy, like, I really... He went yeah. through the ringer, basically. Yeah. yeah. What are they made of? Is it clay? Is it plastic? It's silicone. It's... They're, silicone okay. they're both silicone puppet with uh, mostly wire armature. Neil's got some ball socket armature for his legs. Mm. Uh, and uh, he's, he's all silicone. Money for his head, I had to use replacement head. I couldn't afford a lot of them, so I had only a dozen against, you know, having 30 something. So I, I didn't have a huge range of expression, but I managed to get away with it. And the heads are plastic, mm. so. Um, but, and he's all wire. And the guy that I hired, uh, Ron Cole, uh, to do the puppet did an amazing job because my, one of the challenge of my characters were that they're pretty skinny, like right. Tim Burton character, uh, yeah. famous for that yeah. too, because they're skinny, it's, it's harder to make puppet. Um, yeah. And so my character is also very thin, as you saw in the film, he's got these little like arms and he did a great job, just like, I can't even get my head around that. It's just, I was like, no, it really did look fantastic. Yeah. And check out Faceless Neil, Noella Bori. And you can check those out at facelessneil.com. Uh, you can check it out on Facebook, forward slash Faceless Neil. And you also have an Instagram too, that they oh, yeah, can follow yeah, you there is a Yeah, there is an Instagram, face, at Faceless Neil, mm. yeah. So, <laughs> just just kind of going on the whole darkness and scary motif and everything. Okay. Book of the week this week is The Woods from Boom Studios. Uh, pretty crazy. Basically, just, you know, regular old high school kids just, yeah. you know, acting stupid and high schooly. And <laughs> all of a sudden, like, for the first, like, five to six pages, you're treated to these different characters. You got the big dude who everybody wants to be on the football team and doesn't want to do it. Right. You got the girl who forgot to send in her college applications and her parents are going to kill her. Because she has no idea what she wants to do. Right. Uh, you got the one, like, nerdy outcast kid who's just way too brilliant and 
is one laboratory accident away from being a supervillain. The rebels streaking <laughs> across them. Yeah, the one dopey kid running naked through the hallways. The fucking blundering Mr. Belding principal, you know? <laughs> yeah. You got everybody. Looks more like Mr. Belvedere. And then all of a sudden, bright flash of light, some weird monolith lands in the schoolyard, kind of, um, you know, 2001 Space Odyssey style. Right. And they walk outside and they're on an alien planet. That's nice. There's fucking Saturn, like, spinning around. There's a whole bunch of moons and shit. Yep. And there's flying demons running like around. Flying like flying demon of, bats. Kind yeah. of like The Mist. Have you ever seen that movie? Actually, no, I haven't, but... That's a crazy-ass movie. Yeah. Originally was the Stephen King story, and Stephen King seen the movie and said that was better. Like, yeah. he, he liked it that much. Yeah. So you've got the... <laughs> that was a crazy scene when, the, you know, that the blundering teachers... You know, because all the adults are having a very difficult time accepting the fact that the fucking demons flying around. And <laughs> <laughs> is this going to be hard to like accept to see like flying? I don't know that. I, that was one thing I really liked about it was the the one rebel kid, the the outcast rather, was like, you know, he was embracing it. Yeah, the adults are not going <laughs> to accept this. It's up to us. Right, and oh, that's great. kind of exactly uh, right what away. Happened. It's like it's almost like he knew, almost like he knew this was going to happen. Dude, when the fucking zombie apocalypse comes, I'm ready. I'm not going to be like, oh, fuck, yo, zombies. What am I going to do? This can't possibly be real. You know, then I'm dead. No, I'm going to readily accept that, and I'm going to shoot everybody I've ever wanted to shoot. <laughs> as long as they're zombies. Well, probably not. You, know, you, you wouldn't even give a shit. You wouldn't dead. Be able to, yeah. You killed the zombie Flanders. <laughs> he was a zombie? <laughs> Whatever. Then you have an excuse to shoot people. Exactly. Oh! Okay. And, it's a, and, you know, you don't really get too far into the plot line. You're just kind of on this planet. One of the little nerdy girls gets eaten by this giant bat, and there's blood and gore everywhere. Yeah, the head is people's gone People's faces in an getting ripped off. Yeah, it's, yeah. Shy. No. it's pretty graphic. It's, it's graphic, book. but the artwork is awesome. And it they realize great. that, like, whatever alien force has brought them to this world, they're daring them to find out why. Right. So this marker, this monolith, is actually an arrow pointing them into these dark woods. It's like, you know, come get us, come find us. Yeah. And the kid's like, all right, let's do this. This is the way that it's got to be. We're going to stay here and get, you know, eaten, or we're going to have to kill each other for food because we got nothing in the school. There's no running water, so, so we're yeah. screwed. Let's get out of here. It's like we talk about being up shit's creek, you know? So let's do this. And it was a really great book. Was, Knowing Boom was probably like six to ten issues or so. Yep. It's not going to be long, and it's already off to a good start. Yep. Boom very rarely disappoints, I've noticed. Well, for you, yeah, okay, yeah. I've, I'm usually very happy with them. Yes, yes you are. <laughs> so, guys, <laughs> before we turn in, uh, make sure that you have entered uh, the Peach Basement contest for the yes. Midtown Comics variants for Spidey. It's a pretty tough question this week. We ain't giving them shits away for free. What is... The Sinister Six first appeared in Amazing Annual number one way back in, like, 64. But... He only fought each member of the Sinister Six one at a time. In what issue did he did Spider-Man finally fight the entire Sinister Six all at once? Send us that answer. You can do it on Rafflecopter. Go on to PeachBasement.com, find the Rafflecopter link. Go on to our Facebook.com forward slash Peach Basement and to the Rafflecopter thing over there. You'll find it on the right hand side. Uh, remember, if you share the share our photo on Instagram, follow us and share it. That's yeah. one way yeah. of entering the contest. Follow us on Twitter is another way. Like us on Facebook. There's a whole bunch of ways to enter the contest, but for all of them ways, you still got to answer the question right. You get the wrong answer, and we're going to choose somebody else. So that's just, those are the breaks. Listen, we don't ask you nothing that Google can't solve. <laughs> we want to give you the shit, but you got to make the effort. So... Answer that question correctly. When did Spidey fight the entire uh, Sinister Six all at once? Guys, subscribe to the hall so you can see what comics we're buying each week. Let us know if we're yeah. missing anything. Oh my Questions God. at PeachBasement.com. We're very rarely missing stuff Seriously. when it comes to you. Yeah. You, it's good that you don't have any other hobbies, bro. No, no, no. <laughs> Guys, we will see you next week. Noelle, again, thank you for being you. on the thank show. Thank you for having and me. Lots of luck with Faceless Neil. Thank we look forward you. to it. And, yo, if you need, like, extra voices or something... I'll let uh, you guys yeah. know right away. I would be more than happy to be some derelict monster in a bar. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll throw my hat into that ring. Why not? We'll see you guys next week.
Ты пока. What a douche. What a fucking hell of a... <laughs> 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 you want to know? What are you doing? Should I do a Texas Mule Instagram?